Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another episode of the New York Her Podcast presented by Visa. I am your host, Olivia Landis, and this week I am very excited to have NFL Network's Colleen Wolf as my guest. Colleen, thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? Woo-hoo! This is great. Thanks for having me on. I am so honored to have you as a guest. Each and every week, I, I just get so excited to talk to all of the women that get to be able to come on this podcast. We talk careers, football, so much more things, and, and of course, all the fun. So thank you for joining me. Of course. Seriously, anytime. This is awesome. Like I, I love being able to, to talk to the other women that are in sports, especially NFL. So this is fantastic. Love it. Uh, Colleen, we were talking a little bit before we jumped on here. And you are a Philly girl, born and raised, correct? I sure am. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just did my research, you know. Are you living on the <laughs> West Coast now? I am. So I live in L.A. where they actually have sunshine, which is really crazy. It's not something that I'm totally used to, uh, having been in Philly for so many years. And maybe one of my favorite things that I was able to do when I moved out here was throw away my ice scraper. So I'm very happy about that. Oh my goodness. I, I'm excited for the day that I'm going to be able to do that because I'm one day. From Colorado. <laughs> yeah, one day I'm hoping. Um, I'm originally from Colorado and we get so much sunshine out there. We actually get over 300 days of sunshine in Colorado. Really? Yeah, and people don't know that. People think it's just snow and ice all the time. And it, it really is, it does snow a lot, but over 300 days of sunshine and it's just funny because you mentioned sunshine out in LA and moving to the East Coast, the sun just does not shine out. <laughs> uh, like the, in the Northeast, you'll just, you'll go months without seeing it. Yeah, it's so true. Um, love it though. Uh, love, so you're a Philly girl born and raised on the East Coast and you moved out to the West Coast. How was that transition for you? You said you're adjusting to throwing your ice scraper away, but what about everything else? It was very easy. Everything was very easy about the transition. I. Uh, <laughs> I moved out, I'm, I'm lying, it wasn't like completely easy, but uh, there were a lot of perks when I moved out here just because uh, LA and California, it's so beautiful. But of course, they don't have sandwiches that are delicious like home. And of course, like my family, my friends, they are all home. And when I first moved out here, my husband and I had just been married for, I think three years at the time. and. I was only offered a one-year contract in at NFL Network, and we had just bought our first house in Philly right before that. Um, I was about to like quit TV and had no idea that any of this was going to happen. So we were like, let's buy a house. That feels like a great idea. <laughs> um, and then I ended up getting the job. So my husband and I were by coastal for two years, and that was really hard. Um, I got home maybe like once a month, but plane tickets were super expensive to fly cross country and like the logistics of it all were really difficult with our schedules. Um, so that that was a bummer. But when I first got the job out here, um, my best friend in the whole world, she also got a job in LA the same week. And so we both moved out to LA together and just like got an apartment. So it was very strange. I like went from owning a house with my husband and putting like all of the finishing touches in there. And then all of a sudden I was like living out of a suitcase with my best friend in Santa Monica. So life comes at you fast. Oh my God, that's incredible. I, I had no idea. And wow. Yeah, life does yeah. kind of do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Something interesting that you said that uh, caught my attention. You said you were almost on the verge of quitting TV at that point. Yeah. Why, can you walk me through that? Why, why were you about to quit TV? So I like the plan was never for me to really go into TV, it just kind of happened. So I uh, like I was gonna go to school to be an art teacher, and I really had no interest in like being in the media and stuff like that. But then I ended up like I got an internship at a sports radio station, and like that was it. I loved it, wanted to do it. Um, but I had been in Philly for so long, and I kept getting jobs in Philly. Um, and I felt like I was just sort of stuck for a while. And so I said to myself at like the beginning of 
that year, I guess it was 2014, uh, that I was going to, if I was not in a place that I felt better about, whether it was like a different place of employment or a different position within the place that I was working at that time, if I wasn't somewhere I wanted to be by December 31st of that year, then I was out of TV. Like that was it. I felt like I had to put a timetable on it because I was just kind of stagnant and I wasn't really like growing or learning or getting more opportunities. And I just kind of was like, I'm bored. So I uh, ended up like starting my next plan. And so me and one of the photographers I worked with uh, at the station in Philly, we started our own company and we started shooting weddings for people and making like fun, cool wedding videos for them. So we did like five weddings. We had all of our equipment. We were like getting bookings and everything else. And then all of a sudden NFL Network was like, hey, by the way, do you want to come out here for an audition? I was like, what? I guess so. And I had no expectation of actually getting the job because it was like, really, you're going to like pay me to talk about football for a national network and live in Los Angeles. So it's like, yeah, okay, cool. I'll come out for, for your audition. So I did it uh, with zero expectations and thought that I completely bombed. I was like, I texted my husband right after and I was like, well, that was terrible. Let's just go to the beach and get on the plane and never talk about this again. Uh, And somehow I got the job. So I then had to go back to like my business partner and be like, hey, this whole business thing, it's actually not going to work because I'm moving to LA. Sorry. So yeah, I was very close. Crazy. Uh, yeah, wow. I know. <laughs> so do you do you ever miss the business part? Do, did you enjoy shooting weddings and making videos and stuff like that? Do you miss that ever? I, I liked the artistic kind of part of it. And that, yeah. like, as I said before, I was going to go to art school. So I like the um, creative flexibility that you get when you can edit packages and, like, put things together just from, like, a visually pleasing standpoint. Um, And so that's something I miss. And I also used to do a lot of feature stories and like human interest stories um, in sports when I was in Philly. And I don't get a chance to do those as much now, but there's also like so many other perks that I have now that I didn't before. And so it all kind of evens out. But I was like, for a while there, I was like, you know, a wedding photographer essentially. Yeah, oh my goodness. What an incredible story though. It's so funny too, the way life works out sometimes because you said you were feeling stagnant, like you weren't really learning that much at that time. And you're like, okay, if this doesn't work out, I'm gonna do something else. Um, I'm curious, any any piece of advice? Because I know you're not the only person out there that probably feels like that at times. So do you have any piece of advice for people who might feel that way? I How think did you just approach it? having patience is, I think key. And that is not my forte. Like I'm just not a patient person. I want like things to happen right now. I want like instant, instant results and people to work on things immediately. And by people, I mean me, like I just, I just, am not a very patient person. And I think in this business, like you really need to be patient. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, which is the really difficult part about it. Like it's, it's all about right place, right time, the people that you know, how hard of a worker you are. I mean, you can be lucky, but you also have to be good. And there's so many things that really need to align for all of it to end up working out. And so I think just kind of being true to yourself, not changing for other people, because of course, you know, I- I'm sure you get this. I- I've I've had so many times have had bosses or executives like tell me you know, uh, how, how I should look, how I should be on the air, like what I should be wearing, like, you know, Mm -hmm. just you're pulled in so many different directions. And ultimately, like, I, I have always come back to, well, I'm just going to do what is easy. And that's just like, be myself, because it's really hard to, like, fake it and try and be something else. And then I think like, once I learned that, then I kind of settled into my comfort zone and, and a groove, but having the patience to kind of get to this point was really challenging. So I think that that's something like everybody should kind of heed and just know that I, I feel like every time in my career so far, and I'm sure 
it it will continue this way. Uh, just you reach a point of kind of frustration sometimes. And then I always felt like at the point where I really thought that things weren't going to turn around, they did. So just kind of waiting it out almost. Yeah, um, I'm curious because uh, again, so so interesting to hear your story. And I, I love hearing some of the things that you're saying because I think it applies to a lot of people. And I think a lot of people also experience those things. Did you ever receive any type of pushback for being yourself? Because sometimes it really is hard in this industry. What I've noticed, I mean, I've only been in this industry for about four years now professionally, but you know, sometimes it's hard to like be yourself or find your voice while still kind of encompassing a broadcaster. So did you ever experience pushback right. like that? Yeah, I, I have, because I think that for so long it was, kind of the mold was what it was and you need it to be something very specific. Um, and I remember like I've, I've had, uh, I had a one boss that, that took me off the air and told me that I wasn't memorable enough to be on TV. And what? I was like, I will never forget that ever. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, that's the most like specifically mean thing someone that's ever said. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, but I think too, just kind of realizing that this is all so subjective and it all depends on who is in charge and what they like, what they don't like. And the people that are in charge so often change. And so that turnover is, it can be sort of exhausting and you never know who's gonna be like, mm, I am not sure, I don't like that, but I do like that. And I think that ultimately if, if you just are yourself, like you have gotten to this point so far, that's what brought you here. And honestly, it's like, the, it, it is the easiest thing to do is just be you. But finding who you are, I think is like difficult when you first get into the business and you're first starting out. So if I had advice for anyone, what I sort of did was I watched and listened to the people that I really liked and I figured out why I actually liked them. And then I kind of, cherry picked different parts of their style and then sort of applied it to what I was doing. So then all of those different things kind of added up. Uh, and, and when I was doing it, it kind of added a little different flavor than when they were doing it. And so I think that that's a good way of trying to find what you want to, what you want to be, what your brand is. I mean, it feels so weird and, and gross to say that, but I think like when, when you are trying to figure out your way, especially in media, that that's sort of a good way to do it just from a very broad standpoint. Yeah, I completely agree. Like you said, being yourself is the easiest thing to do. Once you find out who you are and, right. and kind of understanding yourself in that aspect, it's way easier to be yourself not only in this industry, but just in general, than to try and fit into what someone else thinks that you should be. Um, mm -hmm. I've actually admired, what I really admire about you, I've followed you for many years now on social media, and that, when I say that, it always sounds so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like a creep, like, I've followed you on social media, but. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you for following. <laughs> yeah, of course, I got you. Um, but yeah, I followed you for a few years now on social media, and I've obviously seen you on NFL Network many times, and. What I've really admired about you is that you do seem very much yourself on camera. You're, it's almost like I feel like I know you as a viewer because your personality shines through and it, you seem like goofy and funny and, and like you're okay to be silly, but also like you know your stuff so well. So um, just That's such a nice compliment. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I really do. I think it's important too to let, let one another know these things when you, when you notice them and lift people up because – you know, you never really know who you're inspiring. That's that's what I've I've noticed as I've gotten older. I'll look up to other women and I'll I'll really think like, wow, I wonder if this person even knows they inspire me in A, B, C, or D. You know, and, and sometimes it's so you true. Tell people, that's so, so nice. Well, thanks. I mean, it is. Yeah. It is. You know, such an interesting kind of business that we're in, especially because there are. A lot fewer women than men but also i feel like now there are so many more women than when i first started and it, you know it's not like it was super long ago but i just have seen such a change and also such a different approach to women approaching other women in this business yes. because i feel like 
you know, for so long and it continues too, but it, it's so competitive and there are so few spots. And so it just is a natural sort of environment for, for us to kind of be pinned against each other, so to speak. But it's like, I, I have realized uh, banding together is way, way more powerful than kind of like going after each other. And I feel like working at the network now, there are so many awesome women that I work with and we legitimately get along really well. And it has been so nice to build each other up and do projects together instead of it being this like weird, catty, kind of like fake relationship because that is not the case at all. Yeah. And I think um, I've actually had this conversation with a, a few different guests and we've talked about how it has changed so much in this industry. So I'm glad you brought it up. It's a great transition. When we talk about women and the way they, their relationships even together have changed in the network, what have you noticed personally in, I mean, since joining NFL Network, you joined in 2014. Mm -hmm. Correct. You've been in the broadcast industry for a while. So from your experience, how have you noticed that change in a positive way? I think that just from a number standpoint, there are more women that I that I just see day to day. And whether that's in front of the camera or behind the camera as producers, like it is just it's so important for women to be in positions to make decisions um, because representation obviously matters. And I think that that's been a change. I would like to see more from that and just continued progression in that department. But just overall, I think that it's almost like, it's like a trend too, which is a weird thing to say, but it's like, that's, that's what, that's what you should do. And that it seems like it's much easier now to kind of support one another because I think women are much more open to it now because before I kind of experienced just a suspicion, a sort of like, okay, why are you kind of like trying to cozy up to me? And I'm just like, I've always been Switzerland wherever I've been, whether that's like high school, friends, like college, whatever. I've just always like, let's keep the peace. Let's all hang out. Let's like the more the merrier type. Um, and also, like I said, I never really uh, envisioned myself going into this industry before. I was never like, I want to be on TV. And I think that is like a key, um, not having an ego about stuff, because that is always the detriment, I think, to anybody, men or women. But when you have the ability to laugh at yourself um, and to not take yourself too seriously, then I think that that is something that people are drawn to because you, you don't want to be around people that are egotistical. Yeah. So true. We have too many of too many people like that in the world. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, 100%. More for, no more room for people like that. I'm curious, did you ever have, because you never truly envisioned seeing yourself in TV, did you ever have women that you did look up to who were in the broadcast industry? Maybe when you first started off, when I first started off and I first realized that this was a really cool thing that I wanted to do, uh, the when I started at sports, uh, sports Talk Radio Station in Philly, I worked for the morning show on uh, WIP Radio. And there's a woman that still works on the show, Rhea Hughes. And she was actually a family friend of my dad's. And that's how I ended up getting an internship there. Now, my dad, mind you, doesn't know anything about sports. Uh, he just happens to be friends with Rhea. And so I ended up like teaching my dad football, <laughs> teaching my dad about sports, oh, wow, which is so sort cool. of like a uh, sort of a role reversal. But yeah. uh, Rhea, Rhea was somebody who, well, she helped me get that internship. And without that, like this, this whole thing wouldn't have happened because I would have not even known that I was interested in it. Um, so for a while, just, just watching her and then just watching the other women who were, who seemed like they were really cool in sports, like Michelle Beadle, when she was doing sports nation, like that was my girl. I was like, this girl seems awesome. And somebody, it seems like somebody I want to have a beer with. And that's yes. kind of how I based everything off of. That's my scale. Well, how do you feel knowing that this wasn't necessarily your passion at first and you didn't see yourself? coming into this industry. But on top of that, 
you're very, very good at what you do. So what was that like realizing that I didn't even have a plan for this, but hey, I'm actually really good at this too. <laughs> it was like, I, I feel like I'm somebody who doesn't know how to take a compliment. So it's like still hard for me to even like think that way about it. But I, um, I guess it was just something that I, I was a figure skater growing up and I was always really competitive. And when I stopped skating, I kind of, felt like I needed to fill that void with something. And I never really found anything that was close to it until I started doing this because it felt, it, it feels like a game in and of itself, like just mm -hmm. being in the media and studying and like knowing your stuff. And, and I just find it really interesting week to week, just kind of looking at matchups, you know, seeing how games are going to change because of different injuries or different trends because of what's happening on different teams. And like, I nerd out at the draft and combine and it's, it really was a total awakening for me because it was something that I didn't know was kind of inside me. And it's, you know, to have it kind of come out and be able to do this at NFL Network for a living, it's really just a, a total blessing. And I had no idea that it's like I stumbled upon it. And yeah. here we are. <laughs> you you really took the I was just about to say how fun to stumble upon your calling, you know, because I think a lot yeah. of people search for it sometimes or go into something thinking this is really what I want to do. But to be able to stumble upon it, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And it just feels like I sort of caught a wave and I have no idea how long I'll be able to ride the wave, but I'm on it right now. I know it won't be forever, but I'm just kind of like, cool, this is great. Uh, yeah. Totally unexpected. Didn't know I was going to catch a wave like this and I'm still on the board. So I'm just going to like keep it going for however long I can. Yeah. That's a cool attitude to have though. I think a lot of times people, I mean, I'm guilty of this too, but sometimes we take ourselves too seriously. You know, so it, I think that's a really, really cool aspect um, or perspective, I should say, to have. I'm curious because you you play so many roles. You you know, you're a host, you're a reporter, you're, you're on podcasts, you're on multiple shows. What's one of your favorite things to do in this industry? Is it the hosting side, reporting? What is it? I love I love doing Thursday night football. Uh, it's so much fun especially you know non-pandemic let's just pretend we're in a world where the pandemic doesn't exist and we get to be on the road like we normally are for thursday night football that is by far my favorite thing to do because it is it's so much fun it's so unique we get to like the nfl season is such a grind and it is such a routine. And I am somebody who doesn't necessarily love routine because I get bored easily. And so Thursday Night Football was always so much fun because we were in a different city every week and you're at a different stadium, you're seeing different fans, like a totally different fan base, different players, and you're in the action. Like you can feel the actual energy coming from all of the fans that are in that stadium. And it's so much fun to be able to talk to the players after the game. They're always happy because we're always talking to, for the most part, we're always talking to the team that wins the game and mm -hmm. to have them kind of be able to interact with the fans and to see that. Like last year when we're in Baltimore and they clinched the division and Mark Ingram is climbing up the stands and we're trying to get him down so he can do the interview with us. And <laughs> Baker Mayfield, you know, his NFL debut on Thursday Night Football that was wild. And he was like throwing t-shirts out to the crowd. There was a cake involved. Like I love weird things. And I love when, like, I love chaos. And so for me, Thursday night football is all of that. Like I love anytime we do very strange segments and anytime that we throw the rundown away and things go completely haywire, like that's when it's fun for me. That's when I love it. So you really thrive in those types of situations when kind of all all things go out the window and you guys are left having to yeah. for yourselves. You really thrive in that type of environment. That's my favorite. That's my favorite environment. Like <laughs> so I cool. I don't like I it's fine, you know, when we're when we're following the script and we're doing all the hitting all the beats we need to, but when we get to like 
tear up a rundown and just like go like make a total left turn and go in a totally different yeah. direction it's my favorite it's always the best because it's wow, always like yeah. the best reactions because they're all organic and nobody knows yes. what's going to happen next and nobody knows what's going to be said and that i feel like is the most entertaining part of live television i think so too i would have to agree with you on that one i think when it's more organic yeah people really enjoy it and love it most because they can tell it's not scripted it's not fake it's real raw emotions and it's things that are happening in the moment but i will say you might be the first person who i've actually ever heard at least you know you might not be the only one who thinks it but admits that like yo when when it's when everything goes out the window and it's kind of chaos that's when i really thrive so that's, that's when really i'm cool. like let's go <laughs> You're like everybody calm down i'll take it from here yeah it's very strange <laughs> that's so funny well, so you're talking about how you're riding this wave and, you know, you stumbled upon this beautiful journey that has now turned into a wonderful career for you. What do you see yourself doing in the future? Can you still, do you want to do this for a long period of time? Do you want to do something else? Do you want to get back into art? What is it? It's a great question. Uh, I honestly, I I'll do this for as long as they'll have me uh, doing it. And then you know, who knows what's next? I I would work for, I'd go and work for a team. Um, I would go into some type of like PR or marketing situation, but I don't know. I mean, to me, it's it's kind of like, it's tough to be like, what, what do you do after this? Because I'm like, I don't really have any skills. <laughs> it's not like I can like go and start like building things or like, I, like I, I have no idea. Um, yeah. But I, I guess, I guess that like probably working for a team after this would be maybe maybe the best thing uh, like in a front front office type of like capacity head of PR maybe maybe there's a corner office involved who knows <laughs> with a view <laughs> yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah that's really cool though um, love love hearing your journey and love to know a little bit more about your story I had no idea some of those things so it's really cool to hear firsthand how some people's journeys have played out. Uh, before I let you go, I wanted to talk to you about, you said you wanted to major in art or go to school for art. Are you very artistic? Can you draw? Do, are you a painter? What What do you enjoy doing in that aspect? I used to do it all. I used really? to, yeah, I, I was going to go to school for, um, well, I, there was a couple different things. I was looking at illustration, graphic design, or art education. But I mean, I my favorite thing to do is like I love pencil so any anything in a pencil medium is great uh but I also paint acrylic oils watercolors I mean I haven't done I haven't done it in so long I ha I still will like get a little color pencil action going but yeah. it's it's uh it's hard to come by time during the season and then like I said earlier patience is not my strongest attribute. And so whenever I start something like in terms of like sketching or whatever, I just like, I need to do it immediately. And a lot of times you really need to like take your time and do like one tiny little section. Uh, so a lot like I'm, I'm really big into uh, sketching faces. Mm -hmm. So once I get the eyes done, then I'm kind of like, mm, all right, I'm over this. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. I'm going to put you on the spot here for a second. Do you have, and if, if not, it's okay, but do you have anything at your hand or close by that I could see? I would love to see a piece of art if you have it. You know what? Let me grab something really quick. Hold on. Perfect. An old sketchbook that was in the other room. Here we go. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. What do I have going on in here? Here. This is like super nothing, but this is one of the faces wow, that I started and then did not finish. Um, and then let's see, I was how for a while was like that take you? working on like a Hunter Thompson situation. Oh, wow. But then like once I'm done with like most of the face, then I kind of like, I'm, like, like oh, I'm kind of over this now. Yeah. And what happens next? So, yeah, those are like some of the. So Some of the incredible random though. Oh my goodness. Thank stuff. you for showing, showing that on the podcast. Yeah. That's so amazing. Of course. Oh, it's like that take you. Oh, that's pretty quick. Those, those are, those are like, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half, an hour, maybe like uh -huh. it depends. Uh, but usually like if I was going to do like a real big, nice one, that would take like probably like a week or so maybe. 
-hmm. but I have ADD, so I can't sit down for that long. That's okay. I, I totally understand. I think I'm that way sometimes too. Um, so <laughs> you love sketching. The sketches are beautiful. And Thanks. do you, do you have like a photographic memory you would say, or do you have to look at a picture side by side? I like to look at a picture. I like to work off of something. I find that when I'm just like sketching without something to kind of look at, uh, it does not go as well. So I, uh, I usually like to have some type of like guide. I, I usually work off of like photos or I used to do like, just pull out like magazine ads and, and do that. But that's usually the easiest for me. Well, you said you didn't have a skill set, and I find that very hard to believe because I think you're very talented on TV and on paper. Obviously, you can you can draw, do it all, paint. So um, it's a lucrative uh, career, I think. I'll, I'm gonna go into it and just do like sketches on corners. You can find me in a local corner. <laughs> you know, when I move into a new spot, maybe I'll hit you up. I'd love if you could do my art. That'd be great. We'll commission some type of yes. like painting. <laughs> Of your Probably dog, maybe. Well, you're, you've been absolutely an amazing guest. I, I was so honored to be able to talk to you. Thank you so much for coming on the New Yorker podcast. It was incredible to get to know who you really are. Oh, well, thanks so much for taking the time. This was a great conversation, and it was so nice to finally meet you. Well, that's a wrap on another episode of the New Yorker podcast presented by Visa. Thank you guys each and every single week for coming in and listening to the podcast. That was really fun. Colleen Wolf with the NFL Network. Go check out and support all of her content. You can catch her on Good Morning Football on the weekends, around the NFL podcast, and everything NFL. So she was a really great guest. Subscribe to the podcast. Share it. Um, send me some reviews. I would absolutely love to hear back from you guys. I hope you are enjoying these guests as much as I am. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.